Welcome everybody to Chapter 2 Introductory Notes on Matter and Change. I'm Mrs. Gregory. And I'm Mr. Sustin. And here we go. So there are several different ways to describe matter, and you're going to get some basic definitions in this chapter. Every form of matter can be described with a unique set of characteristic properties. Ooh, I like that word. Yes. Characteristic properties. Yes. That's an important term to know. Something's mass is not really unique nor characteristic. I could have a hundred ounces of gold or just one ounce of gold. Well, it would be grams because right, we are right. in chemistry. Grams, way better. Yeah. The mass of the sample of material I have really doesn't help me identify that material. You mean you can't tell that something's gold because it's listed as 100 grams? Um, no. Why is that again? Because it's not a characteristic property of that substance. Oh, of the substance. Yes. So um, when we're looking at these words extensive or intensive, which one are we talking about? Uh, mass would be an extensive property. Mass depend or I mean extensive properties depend on the amount of substance that you have. Oh. Like two liters of Coke. I could have two liters of anything. And right. having two liters of something doesn't tell me what that substance is. Okay, so looking at this picture of the gold bullion treasure there, an intensive property then would be the fact that it's gold colored, right? Yes. Because it looks like there's pieces of different sizes, but they're all that gold color. They're all that gold color. They all have that luster. They're shiny, which is an intensive property of gold. Okay. Well, that makes sense. So if it doesn't depend on the amount, then it's an intensive property. And like, why do we use these properties? So that we can tell one substance from another. Mm. We need to be able to classify substances um, according to their properties and their uses. Okay, and probably when we start working with some chemicals where we're not going to have large pieces like that, then knowing a set of properties to describe matter is going to be more helpful. Absolutely. If, if you only know one property, for example, if something conducts electricity, well, that allows you to rule out a lot of substances, mm -hmm. but it really doesn't help you identify exactly what the substance is. So identifying an entire set of properties really helps. Okay, so now we have two other terms up there, physical or chemical. And you know, I did a quick check with my students the other day, and they seem to know a little bit about physical and chemical. They must have had some awesome ninth grade science teachers that were helping them figure this stuff out. So I'm hoping they can distinguish that or continue to distinguish that uh, when we get into some labs. But can you give me an example of a physical property? Well, uh, with respect to gold, um, it's a solid at room temperature. Yes, it is. Uh, but isn't that because it's a chemical? Everything's a chemical. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. So, if we can measure or observe something without changing what the substance is, mm -hmm. that we have classified as a physical property. Right. And here we're looking at the definition, some more of physical versus chemical. Right. And so chemical, we have how one substance behaves in the presence of another. Right. So, like, if the teacher's present in the classroom, usually the class behaves really well. Yes. But when the teacher walks out of the class, then, you know, things get a little bit yeah. out of control. Is, is that a chemical property of the class? That, that, yeah, that would be an analogy of a, of, of a chemical property, the way substances behave in the presence of other substances. So let's look at some other examples of physical uh, versus chemical properties. Okay, um, With chemical, something is going to change into another substance. And that's happening at the atomic molecular level where we're getting something new. Right. And I think we have some slides here. Yes. Okay. So here's, here's some broken glass. And most people know that glass is brittle. Um, that is a property of glass. Is it a physical property or is it a chemical property? All right, now I'm looking at that broken glass and it seems to me that it's still glass. It is still glass. So 
I would think that that's a physical property. Brittleness would be a physical property. It is. Okay. It is. So, how about this? Uh, if something burns, I believe it turns into something else. Yeah. That forest in a little while is not going to be a forest anymore. Right. It will turn into ash and carbon dioxide and it certainly won't be wood. Right, some water vapor and right. things like that. And I see something else in that picture that tells me that a chemical change is taking place. There's a lot of light there and I can't feel it through the computer screen but I'm pretty sure there's some heat given off uh, based on that photograph that, that firefighter is very brave to be standing there. Yes. So that, those, along with some other pieces of evidence, tell us that a chemical change has taken place, mm -hmm. which I think we're going to talk about in another video. Yes. Uh, but flammability would be a chemical property. Yes.